Only thing I'm plugging is Forgotten Seasons. All right, welcome back. Today we got Mr. First Team All Defense, the Grind Father, checking in from his OG's <laughs> new podcast setup. TA, yes, sure, what's sure. good? How you doing? Man, nothing much. Just chilling, man. You know, great to be here right now, man. It's an honor and a pleasure. TA with your cool mm-hmm. ass, Sorry. checking in live, live from the Truth Lounge. <laughs> Welcome, brother. Thanks for joining us. Club Shiznit, Paul. You know what I mean? I, wanna, <laughs> I don't need the exact details. I just need you to give me the top three to five club, the all club Shiznit, club Shiznit team. Who are some of the all time first time at club first, Shiznit? Time. First, first team, first all team, team all, all Shiznit? Definitely uh, Tony Allen. Congratulations on being named top five. Yeah, for yeah, sure. Yeah, club let's give it up for that. Yeah, let's yeah, give it up. Because yeah, yeah. I, I definitely. I definitely was a heavy participant in club yeah, shit, yeah, yeah, from yeah, the dice yeah. game to the drinks yeah. to the everything. Your plaque, you can is, name your plaque is on Shizna the way. We just down. finishing up some finding some minor details, mm-hmm. but your plaque is on the way from being on the first yeah, team. For yeah, sure, yeah, for sure, for yeah. sure. Go ahead, sorry about that, Dylan. We had to get that out of the way. <laughs> no, I mean I, yeah. that 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 itself. Uh, congratulations, first off. <laughs> And I think that's actually a good transition point to start about your introduction to the league. You get drafted to the Celtics in 2004 and talk about a cast of veterans that you enter the league with. Paul Pierce, Gary Payton, Antoine Walker, Ricky Davis. Uh, I think that chemistry was probably built in part at Club Shiznit. (laughs) But what was your introduction to the league and what was it like having those four legends as your OGs? Oh man, it, it, it taught me a great deal of confidence, mm-hmm. man. And uh, having confidence was mainly, you know, the biggest thing of it all. More importantly, starting out before that, though, you know, I had ran into Paul Pierce in Las Vegas at the summer league, and um, you know, he came in there being Paul Pierce, the mm-hmm. truth. You know, I was I was kind of like starstruck at. But he came in there, you know, he had the bankroll in his hand. <laughs> and, you know, the first thing he looked at the rookies, it was like, I came to see some excitement. You know what? I got 200 for anybody who give me some dunks. I got 200 for air dunk. I looked to the side. I said, you got 200 for what? Now, mind you, we ain't getting paid in the summer league. You know, you probably get some per diem, diem, but you ain't Mm -hmm. getting no cheese. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it was like, damn, hold on, wait a minute. I I think I'm about to go give me some dunks. He giving out $200 a dunk. And, man, as soon as he said that, I went off the rip, got me like seven dunks in a row. Mm. <laughs> hey, after the game, I went and told P. I say, P, I need my bread. He said, don't worry about it, young fella. He ended up giving me like two grand. I'm like, okay. Respect, I like P, yeah. man. P a good vet already. Mm-hmm. And uh, he was like, man, I like you, young fella. He like, you ready for the task. And from then on, man, I'm telling you, man, it was, it was just me and him locked right in. But – Coming to training camp and, you know, having the chance to, you know, see Gary Payton, you know, he didn't he didn't really uh give you too much on the court, but he had a lot of wisdom off the court. You know what I'm saying? Because he told me, he always used to tell me, young fella, young fella, I'm going to get to you in the 48-minute game now. I'm going to need you to take care of all this practice stuff. So I'm like, I, I honored mm-hmm. that. And then Twan, for the most part, he was from the crib. I had been growing up right, being right. around Twan. He from the city of Chicago, seeing him in, at the Pro-Am, you know what I'm saying, trying to go against him at the Pro-Am. You know, cats at our Pro-Am, we, we try to go at the league guys at the time. And so I had got a bit of uh, 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 Twan before, and he used to take care of the young fellas too when he see us, you know, drop us bread off, you know, let us, you know, ride to the games and his Bentleys and cars and stuff like that. So I had already been new uh, ticket, I mean, uh, Twan. And uh, as far as Ricky Davis, that was my first time just seeing the wild side of the NBA. Right. You know what I'm saying? Ricky Ricky Davis was turned yeah, up, man. I match. just and and to carry <laughs> yeah, and just to carry that over to the court. All those guys, you know, came in with the in with their own kind of swag and and confidence is what I picked up from all of them. You know what I'm saying? It is like, man, yo, we when I get on this court, I'm I'm the best person on the court. I believe that. And, and I, man, that, that was one of the introductions right there, just having that confidence, man. And Defensively, T.A., ju- just being, you said Paul, you said Ricky Davis, that's two different dynamic uh, offensive players. You mentioned GP, being able to come into the league, you know what I mean, as a uh, uh, defensive minded. Was there anything you learned from G or Twan or from guarding Paul one on one or Ricky one on one that actually accelerated you as, you know, a top notch defender in the league? 
I played on that second team, on that second unit. We call it the uh, the white squad, and um, we basically had I had to guard uh, Ricky and Paul, you know, because Doc would keep Doc would keep the six man on the green team. So it'd be me, Justin Reed on the rest of peace, Justin Reed. It's my dog. Uh, we, it would be me and him having to guard those guys, and uh, I, I took I took heed into Paul Pierce. One on one challenges before practice, cause that that's what he would do before practices, and you know get the ones going. And uh, it it was my introduction to the step back. I couldn't mm. I couldn't get the rhythm of that step back, but ultimately I played good defense. And at the time before my knee was, you know, got injured, you know, I was pretty much thought I was an offensive guru mm-hmm. myself. But uh, just that challenge right there, you know, him, you know, probably winning majority of those ones. I, I never got discouraged. And, you know, that's what I was saying. Confidence is everything. You know, it'd be days, you know, I come in and try to get that early, get my weight room lift, my conditioning in, you know, get my shots up. And now I'm waiting on P to finish his conditioning and getting his weight room workout. Now I'm waiting on him. You know what I'm saying? I would be, you know, up for the challenge at all times. But, yeah, P, he, he basically, I would give his – my defensive my defensive mechanism that I got now, I mean – Guarding him, it was just like, man, I would be ready for anybody in the right. league that would come my way. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because his step back is different than everybody's step back anyway. You know what I mean? It ain't your traditional step back. His got different time yeah. out slow. He got that Rollo shit to it. You know what I mean? It's almost uncle So if you can get the pace of peace shit, you know, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll talk about it. Sometimes he'll step back, right? And you'll think he's stepping back, but he ain't stepping back. He'll just keep going with that yeah, dribble. Or because he just and moves so to the side, be, really. He make the step back look like, but he really yeah. just moved to the side to use your momentum. He got some tricky shit, man. Yeah. Yeah, man. And so I would love those matchups, man. It would be me, J. Reed, uh, Scalabrini, mm-hmm. uh, and sometimes Perk. I ain't gonna let Big Perk get in there sometimes. Mm-hmm. And man, it was just, it was just, that was P energy, man. P coming in there. I need to get my troops ready. Come on, who, 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 who wanna who wanna play ones? And then everybody just be charged up to play ones before practice, man. So yeah, I, I give a big shout out to Truth for that though. I think that's such an underrated part of player development is who do you enter the league playing in practice? Because a lot of the young guys you don't see the court. So here playing in practice kind of sharpens you. You mentioned that you came in kind of an offensive player and you also mentioned your knee injury. If we fast forward to 2007, the year before KG and Ray get there, you're probably playing like the best offensive ball of your career. You're averaging 19 points a game over like a one month stretch. And then there's a game in Indiana and you tear your ACL on a dead ball. Man, how much, I mean, first off, one of the most just unfortunately timed injuries ever, but you end up getting back to the court like nine months later and playing 75 games, an amazing rehab process and turnaround time. How did that nine months off the court rehabbing change who you are as a player? Well, honestly, uh, I, it kind of broke me spiritually. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, 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 I kind of asked God every day, like, what, why me? Why me? I was having an amazing game, man. I was going against one of my top players, one of my favorite players, Stack Jack. Mm. You know, I always honored his swagger. I always liked his rawness, his realness. And then, you know, they end up signing him to the bag. And then it was just like, it was Stack Jack, man. He he he, he represent that realness. And uh, he was considered one of those defensive players at the time, a three and D kind of guy. And uh, I kind of, I was like, I had like 19 points going to the free throw line that play. And, um, I'm like, yo, I'm, I'm I'm busting Stack Jack. And then when I blew past him, I was feeling good. And uh, you know, at the time, Brian had the Brian had the mm-hmm. cock back. <laughs> when he put you know the what I'm talking up. about? That mm-hmm. dunk where he get mm-hmm. and, he, and, he, and he reached back. I kind of felt like I was in that mode. I kind of felt like Brian at that moment. <laughs> Cause I was like, yo, okay, it's like six minutes, five but minutes. But you had bounce third, here. Stop playing. You had yeah you had yeah, you had a bad average bounce. bounce. I, Stop. Let's not play. Let's but yeah. True yeah, that. Go true continue. That, true that. that. Yeah. True that. So so I I kind of felt like boom. If I wouldn't have just cocked back that hard, I probably would have paused. I probably would have um. <laughs> I probably would have made that dunk, man. And uh, it, it it messed me up. But I was excited that game. I knew I was in a good rhythm. Uh, and before that that rhythm you talking about, I was averaging. I remember Pete telling me. You know he was gonna shut it down for the season. He signed this big deal or whatever, and um, he looked at he looked at me and told me like, "Man, ATA, you got the juice, man. 
like in the movie. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I'm like, yo, you ain't playing today? Mm-hmm. He's like, no, you got to That's a hell out. of a feeling when the, vet, like, when, the vet, when the vets tell you they're not playing and to go ahead. And, and, you know what I mean? and yeah. so when so when he had me that throne, when he had me that throne, you know, I was like, yo, it's up from mm-hmm. here. And I can remember like yesterday, me and my boy Al Jefferson, we used to sit on the back of the bus with the stat sheet and just be looking at the stat sheet like, yeah, we about to get paid, big fella. <laughs> he'd be like, he'd be like, yeah, you right, Ti. He say, what you finished with? I say, man, about twenty and five, and six. He like, yeah, another twenty and ten day for me, man, at the office. So it used to, we used, to, I used to just be so focused mm-hmm. on, you know, what I'm saying, trying to get it done, you know, because Paul had gave me the torch. I'm thinking it's my team at the time, but uh, like I say, it was an unfortunate injury. Uh, I, 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 I cringe about it every day now. Uh, thinking about, damn, I cheated myself out of about 50, 60 million. Mm. But more so importantly, my career, it ended up altering my, my game. You get but what I'm not saying? In like bad now way. it's like. In hindsight, did it turn? Not yeah, in a bad yeah. way. It, it, right in that moment. I, I ended up winning the championship. Yeah. I ended up winning the championship that following year. So, but what, what it taught me was it's like, okay, I can't do all the stuff that I wanted to do offensively. But one thing I ain't going to let nobody do, a motherfucker ain't finna come up in here, outwork me. They ain't about to. They ain't about to get no buckets on me. And I play Paul Pierce every day in practice, one on one. I can guard just about anybody. All I need to do is just take care of my body this these seasons and be ready to be fit and more conditioned than anybody. And I took that it's real serious because Paul that following year he used to always make it like, come on, I'm a, I can't beat none of you young fellas to the weight room. I can't beat none of you young fellas to the um to the treadmill. I can't beat no, I can't be the first guy on the court. And I I caught on quick. I'm like, okay, this man and I already went to the paper telling Danny Ainge and him he need help. So you know what I'm saying? It was on me to just, you know, just comprehend what he was what he was putting out. And I coming in and with the hard work and you know the the hard hat they would say. You end up signing a three year deal in Memphis after you lose in the twenty ten finals. I think it's important to understand, like we know now that the Grizzlies, they have a pretty because of you, they have a storied last decade. But before you got there, the team had never won a playoff game. They had only went to the playoffs three times, even dating back to when they were in Vancouver. Like 15 years, zero playoff wins. So you get there, and what was the process of establishing that culture? Because, you know, guys like Zebo, they had been, like, bounced around a couple teams, and you're the only one that really comes with that championship playoff experience. But when you get there, you're also, if you remember, like, not really – you're getting DMPs your first couple of months. What was the process of establishing that culture in Memphis? Yeah, most definitely. Um, but even getting that, let's let's get this clear. Let me get this mm-hmm. out of there. And Danny Ainge went on record saying this. He regret letting me go. Of course. <laughs> now let's get that. And I didn't want to, I didn't want to leave, trust and believe. You know, I called Paul before, you know, before I had to um sign and go to Memphis. I told P, I was like, P, man, give me another year, man. Just give me a third year, bro. I'm staying. Cause it was pretty much the same deal. But I was like, yo. I need some job security, bro. Give me a, it was a the third, third year. It was just the third so, year, right? Just a third year. That's all the difference was. And um, uh, they didn't get it done. And Paul was like, man, well, if you can't get the third year, man, you know, you're going to have to take care of your business, man. I love you anyway. So, boom. I took that one little phone call, hung up on Paul, and called my agent, Mike Higgins at the time. And I said, man, let's go to Memphis. Now, mind you, when I'm coming to Memphis, I'm taking everything that I seen Kevin took Garnett, university. how he got mm-hmm. ready. I'm taking I'm taking everything how Ray Allen got ready for a game. I'm taking Paul Pierce how he got ready for a game. You get what I'm saying? And most importantly, we're not gonna leave out my my homeboy, my man, James Post. James Post. I took those four listen, I took those four guys like like the way they carry themselves, the way they like like just for example, like the way Ticket come in, he focused. He focused. He don't want to talk to nobody. He ain't playing around. He going to go in there, get him a few sumo squats in. He might get some, do some backwards walking on the treadmill, might do some band work. You get what I'm saying? Go in there, get the treatment that, that he needs to get for his body. On the, You know what I'm saying? And key in on the game. I would look at James Posey. I would see James Posey in there. On the same type of time, not he hearing the ha-ha, not worrying about what happened last night on TV. He coming in there, he got a laptop. And he looking at all the plays of the players that he planned. He didn't went to the he didn't personally went to the, the uh what yeah, they call the, uh, video guy. Yeah, asked yeah, for a yeah, cut. Yeah. He yep. 
a video guys and told him, hey, I want I want to see his moves when he go right. I want to see his move when he on the left side of the court. I want to see his moves when he in transition. I want to see his move when he five, four, three, two, one situations. And he would sit there and just and watch that for the whole 90 minutes until it was time to come in at 35 and watch what the team would show you. So I took that. Then Ray Allen would come in there on some days. You know, he'd come in four hours early before the game, get in the cold tub, hot tub. You get what I'm saying? Go take a yeah. shower. Get a get, get read the book. Read he probably every day he had a different book he reading. I'm like, okay, I don't think I'm gonna be reading no books, <laughs> but uh I like that regimen of him getting in there early. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Take taking what you the shower need, right before the take game. What you need. You just taking what you, you need. You yeah, get what I'm saying? Yeah. And then and Paul Pierce was just so he was just so like just like loose. He was just loose and, and just like just knew he was about to go out there and kill because of the work he put in in practice, the shots he got up in practice before practice, after practice, all that work he did before. And he just felt like he just knew he was ready. And when he would come in, he would, you know, he'll be joning on people. Hey, man, what you wearing today, man? Where you get that outfit from? <laughs> the thrift store. Like he was just real loose, loosening guys up. And uh, and, But when it was time to go out and get ready, when we time to go out and get ready, right before we go out, he would be the one, Celtics, hoorah, Celtics, you get what I'm saying, giving us that energy. And so I took all that and brought it to Memphis, man. I would go out there, man. I, I, I took took Ray Allen's regimen. I took Tiggy's regimen, and I implemented it in there right before the game. So you would always see me on the serious side of things and, and, and taking paying attention to detail when everything – got to, you know, that 48-minute mark. You could always see me focused in on the laptop. You know what I'm saying? I'm taking the laptop to the shower, to the bathroom, to the training room, to the weight room. I'm watching my opponent. And I've gathered all those. That I call it being a pro pretty much. I, 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 I took being a pro and bringing it to Memphis. And guys in Memphis would be looking at me like, like, bro, you don't got an Instagram? Or what you like, on? <laughs> no, I'm not worried about I'm not worried mm-hmm. about Instagram. I'm worried about the Mamba coming in this mug and dropping 60 on us. Cause part of cause part of what when me coming there in 2010, you know, one of the coach, uh, one of the GMs, Chris Wallace. I know y'all familiar with Chris Wallace. He was the assistant GM with Danny Ainge. He drafted me. So it was kind of like like a warm welcoming when he brought me in. And the first thing he was telling me was. Uh, hey man, I like I like what you did with Kobe. How you defended Kobe in those finals in 2010, man. And he was just giving me the statistics. I didn't even know about analytics at the time. He was telling me Kobe shot one of his worst percentages in that finals and things of that nature. And uh, we need that in our program because down the stretch, they kind of post our guards. You know what I mean? They kind of bully our guards. They, they, you know, OJ and Mike. You know, those guys weren't real physical. They like they like scoring savvy. They real scores. And so they was missing that presence. And at the time, we had a good team. You got to think about it. We had Rudy Gay at the mm-hmm. three, prototype like almost like a LeBron mm-hmm. James. I don't want to, you know, no disrespect to LeBron, but had the he tools. Was, he had, he the, had tools. the tools. Fire, you fire get what I'm saying? Fire um, tool belt guy. He could defend, shoot. He had boosties. Shoot. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm talking Jim about Bulls. Mike Dunk yeah, on you, all, all that. that. Sure. So then, then you got an all star power forward and, and, and Zach Randolph who going to give you 2010 out of mm-hmm. sleep. You get what I'm saying? And then you had Mark Gasol, who they was kind of comparing to Avita Sabonis yeah, <laughs> at the time. You get line, what I'm saying? Yeah. And Mike Conley, Mike Conley, Mr. Uh, Mr. Mr. Turnover point guard, ratio guy, never, never, you know, turn to He's not going to have the turn. Yeah. Now, sometimes, well, listen, sometimes that used to blow me because I'll be, th- I'll be pointing up to the lob and he'll give me one of these. Uh, yeah, oh, yeah, time, yeah, yeah, time. yeah. You know, <laughs> I got you in there. Bro, throw yeah. the lob. <laughs> <laughs> throw the lob. But I loved it because, you know what I'm saying, he, he he was always smart with his play, and that's my brother till today. But more so importantly, he was he was just probably I thought at the time one of the top five point mm-hmm. guards in, in the league and people really didn't notice. Mm-hmm. You get what I'm saying? And he's still playing today if you look at his game. But he was a knockdown three point shooter as well. And you and you and you implement me in there. You know what I'm saying? A, a, a guy that's gonna come in and do the dirty work, take charges, dive on loose ball with all the smoke, ready for it, whatever. You get what I'm saying? And, and well respected on the defensive end. And so what I helped do was I believe, and when you talk about culture, I think. We made it to where as guys, when they come in, ain't no more just counting us as a W and moving to the next city. No, you might need to come in, 
get your rest, get a good meal, and be ready for a dog fight. Yeah. And I think that's what the Green Grand culture, that's what the Green Grand culture pretty much uh, uh, I laid out. And that's like I say, I always get credit to uh, to those uh, four guys. I mean, Ray, Ticket, and P. You know what I'm saying? Because they and, and, and Pose because. I didn't do that my first three years in the league. When we were talking about the injury and stuff like that, I used to come in, you know, and fresh off eating some Burger King. You get what I'm saying? And um, not getting my rest playing PlayStation all night. That changed once I got to talking to those guys. Man, as a young player, you need those type of – Oh, for sure. If you get one of those people that you vibe with, you you got them in all three positions – Big guy, wing, you know what I mean? Point guards, or wherever you're looking, you're looking at preparation from uh, from all different levels. T.A., um, exactly. one thing that goes unnoticed or one thing I've been thinking about, would you talked about bringing that from, from Boston? What about, like, who's coaching there? Lionel Hollins? What about... Coach Hollins, yeah, yeah, shout out Coach Hollins. Does Lionel Hollins get, get, need to get some credit for this? Because some coaches, when you bring culture, coaches have to allow it. You know, you could have went to a different program and, and somebody been like, nah, we ain't rocking like that. Or, you know what I mean? You need to loosen up or you need to do this. They might have might have changed your approach. He's come from that old Jack Ramsey, old school basketball. Like you said, you kept thinking in your head, like, <laughs> no, you're going to play tonight. You just ain't going to be out on Bill Street and think you're going to beat us, beat us by 20. You know what I mean? You're going to have to play tonight. How much does that old school Lionel Hollins, Jack Ramsey – old traditional basketball influence mix in with the, uh, you know, the, the Boston Celtics experience. Oh, well, you know, I, well, I got to give you the real. I'm going to give y'all the real. I ain't going to short change. Mm-hmm. It. I'm going to give y'all the real. And you, as you said, I did get some DMPs mm-hmm. when I got there. But uh, for the most part, I remember uh, Coach Hollins uh, wanting uh, Darrell Wright. Yeah. Y'all know Darrell Wright. I got drafted with him in 2004. He had knocked down yeah, three points. Sure. Score. And that's what that's what that's what uh that's what Coach Hollins was looking for at the time. He didn't really understand my game and how it, how it implemented him with with Zebo and Mike and you know Rudy and all those guys. And uh, I took it under the chin because I was like, okay, this 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 is a mad thing for me. It's more like okay, I know I didn't play in the biggest. Part of basketball is the finals. Ain't none of these. No disrespect to these guys, but none of these guys ever got to that part of the of the, of the, of the NBA. And my experience and my voice now, I'm, I feel like I'm a veteran now in the, as a lock in the locker room leader. I'm like, yo, I'm like, yo. So I'm thinking like when we start out, I'm on the blue team, but when I came in, I instantly was on the white team, and I'm like, yo. And he had a guy named. Uh, Xavier Henry. I don't Remember know if y'all him, familiar yeah. with Xavier. Uh, he went Memphis. to Kansas. Kansas. He went, yeah, he went to Kansas. Kansas. And uh, he was he was I think he got drafted mm-hmm. like number sixteen or something. But Coach Hollins was high on him because he wanted a shooter and and and, and Xavier Henry right he mm-hmm. could shoot. However, I'm like yo down the stretch if Kobe see Xavier Henry on him, yo he gonna punish him. Straight if LeBron up. see Xavier Henry on him, he gonna punish him. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So. I always one thing I didn't do in that in that sequence when I went playing, I never pouted. Good I never you. showed them no no I never showed them nothing but team mm-hmm. spirit. And I learned that in Boston. I learned that in Boston. Always be ready. Stay ready. You don't gotta get ready and always have a cheerful attitude. I think Doc Rivers told me that. Because one day he one day Doc had saw me pouting one day and I always told me, like, oh no, fix your energy for one. And I and and and, and that right there carried a long way with me. So when I got there, um, he didn't play me. I think I, I ain't played like a good 21 games. I'm talking about we was 10 games behind 500. I'm talking about every. I'm talking about whether they win by 30, I get in the game. If we lose by 30, I'm getting in the game. No other way I was getting in the game. And we, I cheer, I would cheer, I would cheer. But it was this what turned what changed that moment was. I remember we was playing the Clippers, and uh, coach didn't put me in until like the fourth quarter. We were down like ten, and uh, y'all can look this up. Uh, coach threw me in. No, 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 no. This is against the Clippers, and we was out here in LA, and uh, we were down like ten, and coach put me in. And I guess this was the test to where it's okay. Let's see what he been doing. Why, why, why he ain't been playing? Has he been working out? Is he conditioned? Do we know the plays? He didn't have that problem with me because you know what? 
I paid attention mm-hmm. to detail. I'm still on. I'm still on Doc Rivers' mm-hmm. timing. Stay ready. You don't gotta mm-hmm. get ready. I'm still on that type of timing. So when he put me in, man, I promise you not, man. I had like four steals in a row, which led to a couple of threes and a couple of free throws, a couple of basket. Before you know it, man, leaving out of the fourth quarter, down ten, we end up winning that game, man. You know what I'm saying? And so when we walked in there, uh, Coach Hollins got the game ball. And he came in. He said, "Man, yeah. Uh, I, before we bring it in, I just want to, uh, I just want to give kudos to Tony mm-hmm. Allen, because he, because one thing he didn't do in this in this long period of time while he hadn't been playing, he never pouted. He always was cheerful, and he always been swinging that Gatorade rag when one of you guys hit a three or get a good play. He said, "I want to get this ball to him, man, because he could have easily pouted up and, and said, I got my money and been ready to pack it in.'" I ain't never do that. And when he did that, that's when I knew. I was like, you know what? Coach, you got a heart and you understand this game. And you see you had somebody that you can, you can count on. And I showed – I get I get that trust was built <clears> He was right watching there. you the whole time. And then before – He was messing with me the watching whole, you the whole time. Whole, probably watching you on film and shit Mint- mentally. Yeah, yep. Try, trying to see mm-hmm. what he going to do to me mentally. And that's what I that's what I, I always told myself. I can't get broken mm-hmm. mentally. Because once you're broken mentally, then you, you you go in other places, man. And I didn't want to go in other places. And I always felt like, you know what? That that one little piece of success of touching that finals, man, just that that aura, just everything around that that atmosphere, man, them cameras, you know, that that bus ride. It, 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 I wanted to get back there for real. And, and and with that team, I thought we could do it. I used to compare it to the Celtics all the time. I used to tell Zebo, I say, Zebo, you just as good as Ticket. I say, Mark. You way better than Perk. Nah. I say, I, I, now, man, respect yeah. the Perk. Big respect to Perk. But I'm saying, come on, Mark. You 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 could take that thing out 20 feet, 22 feet. Hell, probably shoot a three if you wanted to. Then I'm looking at Mike Conley. Like, you 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 got a great vision like Rondo. Hey, you, you know what I'm saying? Off. And you're knocking that, it down. Now that I think about it, you're not, you not off in, in what you're you saying. What I'm saying? Yeah. And then I'm looking at. And then I'm looking at Rudy Gay. It's kind of like I'm the like, Paul Pierce, the, the scorer, you know, that could get bro, you a bucket. Bro, you looking like true. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, oh, y'all missing this me. I'm like, I'm t- like, and it's crazy because I told Rudy Gay that what I'm telling y'all now, I t- we had to, I had to do a commercial as soon as I came to Memphis. I told Rudy Gay, if y'all ever get Rudy Gay on here, ask him, man, we doing a commercial. Me, him, and Pete Pranica. I said, man, we, we, we just as good like the Celtics, man. We can probably win it, bro. And, and Rudy looked at me, man. Rudy was like, yeah, man, yeah, I know, I know, I know, man. You know, I'm going to just probably average like 20, 25 points a game, man. We, we didn't see where it get us. I looked at him, man. I said, man, let me get up out of here, mm-hmm. man. This man don't realize. He don't realize what I'm saying. Do you know what I just hear? He ain't, he ain't picking up what I'm putting it's down. It's not registering. It, yeah, it ain't yeah, registering. Yeah. Like, it ain't yeah. registering. And so as we start playing and he start seeing and it, it start getting it start getting groovy. But man, man, just you bringing up the Memphis days, man. It, it started out exactly like that. Uh, the story was that the grit and grind started when you challenged Rudy Gay to play through an injury, and he didn't. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, let, 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 it's a little twisted. It's a little twisted. This and this is my brother. I just saw him the other day too. So look, this is what happened. I'm gonna give y'all the I'm gonna give you the real beans. So right. We played in Oklahoma City, right? And um, Kevin Durant had like about 45 or something. And Rudy Gay, I remember walking back through the tunnel. I remember Rudy saying, man, that's messed up, man. Ain't nobody showing on the fucking screens. Ain't nobody hedging. We ain't paying attention to the pick and roll defense. You know, we drive and kick. Nobody contesting at the... So I'm listening to him. I'm like, Rudy. And dude, Kevin Durant, man, like that, that's mm-hmm. gonna happen, bro. Let's swipe it off and let's just get to the next game. The hell with it. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I didn't play that much. That, I don't even think I played that game. But the, we played them like, I wanna say about eight days later. And mind you, we was in Sacramento <laughs> the game before we go to Oklahoma <laughs> City. Rudy Gay doing windmill dunks <laughs> in the <a> breakaway. <laughs> I'm talking about and one of the people shooting threes, doing all we gotta do. We got the Oklahoma City, right? And mind you, I told you, I'm a guy that's going to pre- prepare for my opponent. I, I'm under the James the James Posey Act. And at the time, I was studying James Harden, him coming out. I don't know if you probably remember this, uh, Jay. Look, I, they used to throw it to Collison. Collison get it. 
the the wing Sabalosha cut from the wing and he a dribble handoff all the way to the corner with James Harden so he can come mm-hmm. off his left hand out mm-hmm. of that corner. And he could either pop behind Collison, shoot the three, or get to the hole mm-hmm. with his left hand. I was studying that play for the whole time we getting ready for the game at 90 minutes. And so right before the – right, you know how they put the names on the board? You might, you might look at the board. They might have Rudy Gay, Durant, such and such, yeah, Sevalosha, mm-hmm. Zevo, yep. Collison, right? And I looked up right before we – right right before we were about to talk at 35, I seen one of the ball boys coming in and wipe the name off and put T.A. And so we talking, we talking, and, and, you know, they turn off the lights. I don't even see my name up there. And so, mind you, I got my headphones on a little mm-hmm. bit, so I'm I'm still vibing, trying to get into the mode. And uh, I look up, and then Coach say, "Tony, Tony." Yeah. I'm like, I take the, I take my hand. He's like, "Huh?" He like, "You you starting off on Durant tonight?" I said, "I took my headphones off." And t- I looked at, I said, hey, "I said, Rudy, talking that, yeah, you ain't playing." Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he said, "You ain't man, you just windmill the other night." Wait, but tell me, you you got the? He like he like no, nah, my toe hurt, my toe. Ah. Uh. But I also remember that conversation you had walking through this tunnel last week, mm-hmm. too. So I was like, all right, cool. So now I got to re-register. I ain't looked at one film mm-hmm. on the rent. And so I'm kind of hot at them. I'm, I'm really hot at them. I'm, 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 I ain't going to sugarcoat it. I'm hot at them. I'm hot at them. And so they put me in the game, man. Make a long story short, man. I finished with like uh, 20, I want to say 27, 9, Seven and five, 27, seven and five. Now, mind you, KD here about 30 it's something, okay. down there 40. I ain't gonna it's let okay. you. But we got the win. Yeah. We got yeah. the win. And so, and mind you, I hadn't been playing but smart spot minutes at the time. So when the when the when the camera got in front of me, I was still so hot at Rudy because I'm like, yeah, we we done did it. I, I can't wait to get back to this locker room and, and check Rudy and tell him, bro, your ass should have played. You feel? Because it, it ain't in my pay grade to be shooting mm-hmm. this many damn shots. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get that clip. <laughs> but no, I um I, I I remember looking at Rob Fisher. Shout out Rob Fisher. That's my boy. Uh, and he was like, "Ta, oh, this was a stellar performance. Uh, we didn't even know you had this in you. Uh, where where did this come from?" And I, and I was just so mad. I just said, "It's just all heart, grit, yes, grind." Yeah. And that's it. And and so it was really directed towards Rudy. Like that's what that was what I was gonna go tell Rudy in the mm-hmm. locker room, but they stopped me, and I didn't think they was gonna, you know, put me in for the for the interview. Hell, I thought probably Zebo should have got the interview, but they gave it to me. And before you know it, that was that was the start of that era. When I got back to the city, it was so many people saying grit and grind on my Twitter feed. It was, it was grit and grind. It was just gr- it, They just changed it to Grand City, pretty much. Let's yeah. just make mm-hmm. it that clear. That's Grand City right now. And uh, they had my back from then. It was like, yo, T.A. need to be playing. Two-part question. Where do you get your – who did you study? Who's like your North Star if do, if you have one? And then the second uh, second part I want to ask you is, do you think you were a better on-ball defender or off-ball defender? Well, my, for, the, for the first question, I'm going to just go ahead and keep it all the way clear. In Chicago – it's a – y'all familiar with how outside basketball is, pro-am yes. basketball is. Guys like to clear out. They like to clear the yeah, ball yeah. out, right? I, I always been the guy like, yo, you, are, you you about to be in for a rude awakening if you think you about to clear the ball out on me and have the whole stands running out of here saying, oh, baby. <laughs> you feel? That's not going to get done on me. So it started early on just playing in the pro-am in Chicago, the IIT pro-am. Uh, some of the greats that played there. I'm talking from Quinn Richardson, Mike Finley, Tim Hardaway. Uh, 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 who else we got? Uh, Twan Walker, Bobby Simmons, mm-hmm. Sean Marion. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the list goes on. You mm-hmm. get what I'm saying? And uh, those playoff battles, <clears throat> we would we would as young as we would be on teams in there because we was the shorties coming up, the next up shorties that would be in the pro am playing, and guys would try to clear it out and uh. That was like a disrespect to me always. Like, and so I carried that on to college and I carried that on to the league. And that's and it's stirring from high school. I never wanted nobody to feel like you was gonna cross me over and get to the basket, start shimmying and shaking mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? So my credit to the to 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 the IIT Pro Am and Chicago for that. More so importantly, as far as being on ball defender, I had two type of 
two type of um, talents, I believe. And like I say, I gave one credit to Coach Sutton, resident peace Coach Sutton, and he taught me how to play off the ball. He taught me how to, you know what I'm saying? Deny. Deny. But no, no, not only deny, but, but like when the pick and roll is coming, he taught me how to bump the pick and mm-hmm. get back. Into the mm-hmm. passing that's lane. That's old school. That's See, a lot, old back school. Then, that's like, yeah. Back then. That meant everything. Yeah, back then you could throw that, you could throw this and, and, and hold up the big, stop the lob, and get back and close out. So I had got so good at that. And uh I just think like it was it, I did it a lot against the Warriors. That's how that's how I made first team all defense mm-hmm. famous. I did it a lot against those mm-hmm. guys. But more so importantly, I liked my own ball defense better than my off-ball defense because I knew for a fact the team had to rely on me to get the stop. I always wanted to be the guy that if they got to – if this game come down to yeah. a tie game and they got to shoot it, I want to be the guy that makes him uncomfortable. He's not about to wind up and get comfortable with what he's been practicing out there. With his know, headphones with, uh, on. Chris with, with his headphones on. Yeah, yeah. yeah a nah, song. You, yeah, nah, uh you, you ain't about to do none of that shit. Yeah. No, nah, all that uh-uh. stuff they – Chris Brickley and those guys, like all that, you know, you're not about to get comfortable in your rhythm mm-hmm. and game. So it was almost like this, um, Jay. Like this would be a cool conversation how we talking, mm-hmm. right? But if I get into the camera yeah. like this and I'm talking like this, <laughs> y'all, exactly. y'all like, y'all like, uh, yo, 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 back, yo, T.A. Chill, is cool. Chill, yeah, yeah. And that's, and, and, and that's the energy I wanted you to have when I was yeah. sticking you. You yeah. get what I'm saying? When I was on ball. And and I know for a fact that's what you practicing and working on in the summer. You working on your five, four, three, two, one. But you ain't working on your oh, yo, hold on. Let me, let me pick it up. Yo, I done fumbled. You get what I'm saying? It came up a little bit because yeah, yeah. I done tapped mm-hmm. it one time, it's out your hand that you're not working mm-hmm. on that. And by that time, time is growing down. See what I'm saying? So now your five, four, three, two, one is really a, a turnaround, 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 turnaround. Now, now shoot it, because I'm contesting. Yeah, then sure. they started having to work on that. Because of the because of like the defenders like you, when when you can get away with a little bit more on the defensive side, then they had to start to work on them mm-hmm. quarter them quick quarter turns. It went from the ISO come down, skip, be all comfortable, to you moving up the court a little bit, up near half court, sometimes a little further, depending on who it was. Then all that shit went out the door. If you had to go into a bag, it had to be real specific. You had to eliminate two or three different movements and keep that shit real. I think it advanced like player development. That's what basketball does, right? Good players, whether they be mm-hmm. on the offense or the defensive side, they disrupt the normal status quo of basketball. And then it's the good player development coaches. It's their job to adapt to that, tell the head coach what's going on. And now you got a culture. Now you got Grind City. Now the now when the video the video dudes know what to look look at and highlight, hey, this is cool. We know you're gonna get a dub, whoop de whoop de whoop, because we got the action over here. But I wanna highlight what T A is doing here on the weak side. Right? Now you got the dude behind TA. Mm-hmm. Oh, I see what TA on. You know what I mean? Now you rising yeah, the level, you know what I mean? Because he want to play. You know what I mean? That's yeah. the same thing you did with Paul, I imagine, and everybody else and watching him. You kind of like sit back. If you got a good bet, you're like, ah, I see what he on. I can use that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I can use that. I don't need to do that. That's his thing, not mine. But uh, once you break that third wall, like, ah, uh, it's almost that simple. So, you know what I mean? I just want to give you your kudos for that because I think because if we don't have TAs, yeah, we don't have – the advanced moves and shit that you're seeing right now. If everybody's just lays back and allows you to come up skipping and hands up and then shooting 30 footers, which people can make now, then we don't see some of the advanced stuff that we do. We don't get the best Kevin Durant. We don't get the, we don't get the DeMar DeRozan's bringing back the mid range game. That's my little uh, rant on what defense means to all. No, for here. sure. And I had great battles with, I done had great battles with both of those guys. Yeah. You just named. I, I used to get up for sure. In Toronto, like I used to say, you know what? If I gotta go to Toronto to go through customs and they give me this hard <laughs> of a time, oh, DeRozan, mm-hmm. it's lock up mm-hmm. season. Let's go. I'm ready mm-hmm. to lock up. And uh with Kevin Durant, I remember him having the um the the player development coach who used to always be in his ear. He he coached for the Washington Wizards now. I forgot his name. And then he was over there, he was over there in Portland, I believe. But uh man, those guys. Man, those guys was just battles, man. I'm talking about you. You had to. You had to get to. You had to get to a, a level of, of. For sure, you got to get your rest. For sure, you gotta can't get discouraged, and 
and understand that the referees are going to get them them mm-hmm. superstar calls. And and I believe once I got out the league, I believe they made it a point of emphasis to, to say, you know what, we're going to take this arm bar out. <laughs> I think they took that, I think they took that out because of guys like myself and Artest mm-hmm. and you know Bruce Bowen, uh, you know those type Shane of guys. Batty man. So big it, shot, Shane, Shane yeah, Batty, yeah, yeah. man. Big shout out to Shane. I played with Shane. I learned a lot from mm-hmm. Shane too, man. Shane, Shane was a guy, man. Um, but I learned from him. He he honored analytics. Fact. You know what I'm saying? So he would he he would he would look at the analytics and see, okay, well he goes, he only shoot. 30% when he has the ball having to drive in his right hand. And he's shooting 65% when he drives the ball to his left hand. And so I think uh, he'll be like, well, today, T.A., I think I'm going to force him right. Uh, if he beat me there, then so be it. I used to that's be like. Dude, I was that's just thinking. That's I used to be like. Analytics, yeah. I didn't understand yeah. it. <laughs> I just I live with it. We're all pros here. I, like, I mean, Jesus, that's why they got these <laughs> analytics. Yeah. We had we had, uh, we had Battier on. He was talking about him uh, him versus Kobe. He loved, like, forcing people to take long twos. That was his old. Exactly. Old I, yeah. I, yeah, he did that. Not with just. Kobe, mm-hmm. he would study yeah. everybody too like that. And I'll be like, damn, what if he make it though for the game? And that 30% look like a hundred percent shot. Like I'm like, no, nah, I ain't going, I ain't going. I'm I'm yeah, I'm gonna yeah, I'm gonna live with I'm something deny. else. When they I'm take I'm this keep photo, when they on take this people. photo, I'm gonna be laying all on this <laughs> motherfucker. Yeah. <laughs> exactly, exactly, I want, man. I wanna go through, I don't know if you realize like the gauntlet of playoff matchups that you went through from the time you ended with Boston to Memphis. But in a four-year oh, playoff know. stretch, Kobe, LeBron, Durant, Ginobili, Wade, you said you're a big film guy, so I know you have the scattering reports. I want to go kind of rapid fire. What is like the one to two sentence scattering report okay, with go each ahead. of these guys? And we're going to go, go down ahead. the T-A-1. list. Not let's the coaches with, one, the TA one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, I got, let's, you. I got let's, you. Let, let's start with Cleveland LeBron. So the end of your Boston tenure, what was the Cleveland LeBron scattering report? Well, at the time, I must say his game wasn't as advanced as it is now. Uh, I really wasn't worried about him posting me because he didn't have a post game at the time. And the scouting report was basically go up under all the pick and rolls. He's going to get about 40 to 50 pick and rolls a game. So be ready to fight up under it. If he's in transition and he's in the pick and roll, fight over the top. And, you know, you're going to have your help because we, was we wasn't we was sagging on him. We was we was like corralling on what they call that uh, show. We was, mm-hmm. we, was, we, was, um, we was like soft mm-hmm. show maybe. And um and if he if he shoot the jump shot we living with that. You can't do that now though. I can't say we can't do that now. <laughs> He's also not moving quite as fast. True. Or no, as he high. picking his spots. He picking his spots. Uh, Kevin Durant, OKC. He said he named you as the toughest defender. He said uh, Tony Allen had me thinking about my offense differently. If I'm going to shoot it, I'm in the lane. I'm going to go. Uh, Allen was cutting shit off, denying the ball from me, got into my pocket, so I needed to find different setups. I started working on preparation before I catch the ball, just small parts of the game. I felt like yeah. he was teaching me all that little shit. Didn't I just say that shit? Hey, yeah, so look. Man, yeah. No, for real, you just said that. So look, with, with, with KD, I knew I didn't have a snowball chance in hell if he caught that ball. Let's just keep it right there. He's seven foot. If he bagged me down and spin, I can't contest. So my whole thing was... I knew Russell Westbrook. Listen, I knew Russell Westbrook. Shout out to Russ. I knew I, w- I would talk shit to Russ, right? I would talk shit to Russ, right? And I knew he all in his mind, he like, I got Mike Conley sticking me. Why y'all not coming to me? And so we know Kevin Durant is the first option, right? I would deny him. Boxing one. So if they would run a, let's just say they run a pick and roll with Ibaka. Mm-hmm. Ibaka, I'm not stunned towards you. You can go get you a dunk, but Kevin Durant isn't touching it. So now when Coach Brooks would call up, uh, let's get this play to Kevin Durant, they would like run a pin down. I'm lock, I'm not even locking in trail. I'm shooting through the through the uh I'm shooting through the pick, getting low with my shoulder, and keep staying in my deny, being physical and Russell Westbrook would hate when I get them steals from him. He, 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 thought, like, he, he used, used to throw them blindly because so, that's a hell of a target. Yeah, he, or he'll yep. float them. Or mm-hmm. he'll float them. I try to float them. I, and by that time, I didn't got so physical with with uh, Durant that I didn't push it off of Durant, got the steal. We going the other way. But uh, I thought he always got his numbers. Let's just say that he always got his numbers. But it, he just wasn't as effective as he wanted to be simply because, like I say, I got closer to the screen on him. You get what I'm saying? I got, I got – 
ready to deny. And more importantly, I studied those guys' plays and what they would do. Like I would, I would when they call out the offense, I'm telling Mike, that's a that's a fluff screen. Hey, Zebo, be ready for the flare. Mm -hmm. I'm going over. You get what I'm saying? I knew the plays way before mm -hmm. then. You know what I'm saying? I would tell uh, who who I tell. I tell Mark. I say, Mark, you got backside. I'm I'm fighting over this. When the road comes, just that's tag. Don't worry about it. Kick, kick uh, it, the Rasheed Wallace. Uh, all right, all right, yeah. Yeah, he about to come down over there. You know what I mean? That's the that's the old school. Oh, it's very discouraging. Yeah, it's very discouraging. It's every very team discouraging. actually for a while, like when I was, every team had one a player like that. It was Rasheed, a KG got it. Like it used to be uh, a TA. You know what I mean? There's a couple players like we call a play and they'd be like, "Hey, that's 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 so and so." And even if they heard something they didn't know, hey, that's new. <laughs> hey, what, hey, take this down. <laughs> that's, that's new. new. Take, take this <laughs> hey, y'all record yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Durant was he was yeah. a problem. Let's just say he was definitely a problem. Mono Ginobili. Mm. Mono Ginobili. Mono Ginobili. Ah. Uh, I, I always lived with forcing them right. I, I tried my best with forcing them right. I knew he wasn't stronger than me. He wasn't gonna. He wasn't gonna like put me in a, a, a situation where he had to dis like had put me in like he had the advantage. It was more so like I right, he need a pick, and I'm forcing him right. You get what I'm saying? I'm and stay down on the head fake because if he drive and he step back, he gonna head fake try to get that. And he was real like like slithery, and you know what I'm saying. So I was just matching his intensity as much as I can. Uh, Dwayne Wade. Mm. Flash. Big shout out to Flash, man. Chicago kid. Um, but Flash, it was just more so, you know, like it was more so like LeBron. Go up under all the screens, uh, you know, try to stay out of foul trouble, stay down on his head fakes. Uh, and in transition, you know, try your best to keep up with him. For mo for the most part, Flash always got to that line. He and he, what, One thing I like about Flash he play off the ball just as good as he yeah. play on the ball. So you might think you might shut him down with that in the pick and roll. We might, you know, I won't say, say shut him down, but we could contain him in the yeah. pick and roll, and he'd probably be one for five, right? But he also could go get three putbacks and three back doors and get to the line four times before you look up. He got 18 okay. points. Hey, T, how come man? he doesn't get enough credit for being a defensive guard that he was? Because I know he's – remember, he was going around – he blew my shit up one time that I, in Atlanta I wasn't expecting. <laughs> remember, he was going around beating all the Dwight Howard and every big dude that could jump, dunk. How come he? How come yeah, he doesn't yeah. get enough credit uh, 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 defensively as he was as for his known for his? Was he was he up there? Do you feel like he was up there as, as a top defender as the guards, or do you feel like he, he was underappreciated, or is there some other people that definitely okay, underappreciated? Yeah. Definitely underappreciated, but more so than anything, I don't think he 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 didn't play defense for the whole game. Type, yeah, there you go. Type of player he was. He was he was a he was a get okay a stop when you needed a stop. Uh, we that we yeah we down three. Uh, I need to, we need to get this stop. Somebody got a wide open layup or or big, like you say, about to go bang out. I'm gonna come from behind, block it, get back, get the ball, go get the and one. Now it's yeah. tied up. Like now we got a that's chance fair. to win the ball yeah. game with him, with him with the ball that's in his fair. hand. Like that's that's the type of that's the type of player yeah. he was. Yep. Last but not least, Kobe Bryant. He said that oh, he also man. named you as his toughest matchup. Everyone knows, but he said he never heard you ask for help. Which probably is where most people are probably asking for help when they're on an island with Kobe Bryant. Yeah, yeah, and 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 you hear it so much. So it it be like times where you know guys get put in the post, and you know Kobe was a great post player. A lot of people don't even really know that his footwork out of the post is down there like Elijah mm -hmm. Wan. You know what I mean? I mean he could catch it, spin, go baseline. Catch it, spin, spin, then spin the opposite way, come back. He has so many counter moves, Ridiculous. and if he if he smelled any blood, the first thing he would do is he he'll pound your chest in like with his shoulder, throw his elbow, pound your chest in, throw it with his like his whole body just and try to get the get mm -hmm. to the fadeaway where you can't even contest. And my whole thing was I was like, yo, I lift too many damn weights for him to be throwing his mm. shoulder in my chest and me calling for help. Like I don't need no help. I got this. My team depending on me for this. And like I said, back to confidence, back to not getting discouraged. I wanted to be the one that people say, you know what, T.A., man, you, you did a good job on Kobe. And after each game, after each game, after each game, after each game, it, it, it put 
fuel to my fire to go out there and compete. And I was like, yo, I, I'm, I'm gonna get my rest. And I think I think I got mm -hmm. I, I think I got him tonight. But it would always be that head fake, head fake, and you fall for the head fake. You like, got the no, triple head yeah, fake yeah. though. That's not. It's not fair. <laughs> quadruple. quadruple. It, it, it might be a quadruple. He got head it out the three point line and shit. It's like, come on, bro. And you know yeah. it's coming. You know yeah. it's coming. And but like I say, I would never get discouraged mm -hmm. if he hit five, six, seven in the room. I'm giving him that same energy. I'm and it's like, damn, like when he's trying to box out. When you boxing out, he throwing his elbow in your neck. He, so I got to meet that same intensity. And I wanted to be always the one riding for my team. Like, I'm not scared of him, man. And I done seen some guys look at that man and just say, you know, here you go, go on to the rim. I didn't want to be that guy. But uh, if I can put words in, in the one uh, one one sentence, I say uh, unstoppable, man. <laughs> unstoppable. You can't – look, you can't you, – look, it, I'm talking early in – you you couldn't go under the nope. pick and roll. He had a post game. Most definitely. And it was one time he, he was averaging down there 38, 40 points you a game in one month. You talking about Swole, Kobe, when he was like 240? Swole. What about Swole being yeah. when he was running around and you couldn't get physical with him or do nothing? Ex Come on, man. Yeah. All that, man. I'm, and I'm get, I don't know if y'all know this. You know, let me give you some quick trivia. You know, Kobe Bryant fouled me out in eight minutes. Six fouls in eight minutes. What did he get you that. with the hair fake? So I was, <laughs> man, I was just nervous, man. Yeah. I was just like, damn, I'm actually running up against this yeah. dude. And from that point on, I always look back at that. And I was like, yo, that'll never happen to me again. You Six get what fouls I'm in eight minutes? Man, that's crazy. <laughs> that's he had you in the, the chamber. Said, he had you in the chamber, TA. That was your first matchup against them. Yeah. So it was like so it was like, yeah, are you you mm -hmm. just looked it up? Mm hmm Yeah. <laughs> I was nervous. I was nervous. Hey, one thing that gets uh um that doesn't get talked about enough, T A in what is it, twenty eleven, you're the number eight seed, you beat the number one's uh Spurs seed in six. No, you you see a lot of one scene to lose to lower seed scenes get a lot of love. How come you feel like that 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 uh that that series doesn't get a lot you know as much as a we believe or any other one to eight or one to ever matchups? You think is that an underrated series that doesn't get enough credit? Yeah, I'm, I mean that that specific series, we actually wanted them that year. Mm -hmm. You lost purposely, say that, right? Yeah, we lost. We we took our last two games off so we can seed up right and um be the eighth seed and uh you know we let Portland get their last win or whatever. But uh we definitely felt that we just had the the upside on those guys. Like I said, I was I was more than and willing and ready to lock in with Ginobili. Uh, I thought I thought at that time Tony Parker was on a on a decline. At least I thought he was. I thought Mike Conley was a better point guard than him that year. And Zebo, he was all NBA of that year. You get what I'm saying? And Marcus Gasol, he was That's playing a whip. defensive player That's of the year. That's a whip type to basketball. walk in the gym so, with. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, I, you ain't mad for feeling yeah, that way. Yeah, for you know, yeah. And so, and and so, with with that being said, it was like it was like Coach Hollins. Uh, you know what I'm saying? I give him, I give him a lot of kudos in that because he instilled it in us. He told us like, "Yo, I think this this is gonna be our best chance to get out this first round." Mm. And he was he and we started believing in it. And before you know it, man, we upset uh Coach Popovich and Coach Popovich told the media, you know what? They'll never ever beat me again. <laughs> he meant that. He meant that. So big shout out to Pop for standing on his word mm -hmm. for that. He stood on that business. But we caught him by surprise, man. And I don't think nobody in the world had us winning. If you look at that year, that everybody had us one and out. And we mm -hmm. took that to pride too, listening to the whispers in the media. And uh, I think that that play alone, side to people, you know, coming out there to compete, you know, when everybody counting you yeah. out, you know, guys that's coming in here just putting, we got the same 24 as everybody else. And we probably working harder just than anybody else. You know, small market team, we ready to make some noise and put it, put our team on the map. And I think, I mean, our city on the map, but I think we did a good job of that that year. But it definitely weighs up with mm -hmm. all of, you know, the, the We Believes and the other guys who have made noise. Uh, Zach Randolph was incredible that series. I think when you roll back the tape of just Zebo in Memphis, something that stood out to me is how well you played off of him as a cutter. You got so many buckets off of Zebo post ups as a cutter. <laughs> How'd that chemistry develop? 
and just how nasty it's got to be pretty demoralizing on the other side when a dude that can't jump over a napkin is jabbing you yeah, and giving correct. you 17 <laughs> points in the fourth quarter. Like, Zebo was so good. He was nasty. What was your relationship like with him, and how did you develop that chemistry of, of, of playing and scoring off of him? Man, well, you know, I had always co- watched Zebo, you know, growing up in my career anyway, just watching him from afar. But just to get around him and see the, just his work ethic and how he always got in – Got in and practice and wanted to compete against, you know, he wanted to compete against Mark. He used to always tell coach, hey, put me put me up against Mark. I need to be playing against some, some small stars. I need like he used to always want that smoke and just just to see him carry it over in the next day in the games and things of that nature. I already knew what he could do. So uh just me being able to cut off him is he calls so much mm-hmm. attention. He gonna bring you four to six points per game. You know what I mean? And he he ain't he ain't shot neither. He he want mm-hmm. that ball too. You know, mm-hmm. there's one one thing we had to help to up help his game was because he had a they, back in the day they used to call him the black hole. Right. You know what I'm saying? Meaning if you if you and throw that ball in the zebo, he, he not throwing it back out. You get what I'm saying? And so Coach Hollins helped him understand like you know what you're gonna have to utilize making that cut pass from Ta cut. You're gonna have to utilize when they double from the top throw it back out the uh. Uh, Mike, you're going to have to utilize sometimes, you know, uh, getting it not from the initial, but from the high low. You get what I'm saying? And that was, that's what coach, that's what coach helped him with. But he used to always tell me if I jacked up one of them threes and he touched that ball, he'd tell me, ATA, ATA. You know, he always shaking his head like this, ATA. You're going to get paid playing the defensive end and cut. You know what I'm saying? Don't throw that thing down here. <laughs> so he would let me know. Like, I'm going to get you, I'm going to get you cracking, TA. Be mm-hmm. cool. You know what I'm saying? So, and that was helpful for me, man. And I wouldn't mind running 50, 60, 70 sprints playing defense and them throwing the dog a bone there now and then. Cause I was all in, man. It was we had that one team, one goal mindset. And man, we we went as Zebo went, man. That was our dog. Uh was the Thunder Grizzlies did, – did you consider that a rivalry? Because you played each other three times in four playoffs, two Game yeah. 7 series. Uh, I know, like, you and Perk had history from Boston, so now you're seeing mm-hmm. your boy over there. And it seems mm-hmm. like kind of a contrast of styles because, like, OKC, you got Durant, Westbrook, Harden, dudes that were immediately superstars. And then on the flip side with Memphis, like it's like you said, Zebo. Uh, they called him a black hole. He was a kind of a castaway, kind of like a band of misfits. And you end up seeing each other so many times in the playoffs. Uh, what did, did you consider that a rivalry? Oh, most definitely, we mm-hmm. considered it a rivalry. We always knew that. We always looked at them as they was in our way, and we was in their way. Uh, uh, it was one year. I, I think I played against them two years where they had one year without Westbrook. We got past them, and I yep. think I played with them. I'm not sure if I play ever played with him without Durant, but more so than anything, um, I, I always looked at it like, yo, that's the team to beat. And and sure enough, they was, man. Those young superstars in Westbrook and Durant, man, you you seen what they become, man, and over the years, man. And I, like I say, I had huge respect for them. I always, you know what I'm saying, got my rest when it was time mm-hmm. to play them and um Used to go eat at Mickey Mantle's. Like, Mickey I, I, Mantle. they, they knew me first. <laughs> hey, that restaurant so popping. I used to go in there. They, they used to call me by my name. Tell you, hey, what's mm-hmm. up, baby? And I go in there, man. But no, nah, man, them just some memories that I I'll, I'll never forget. Those battles, man, I respect. And uh, we we definitely had some clashes. I remember it being a, a thriller. One year, I remember the first time they beat us when they had James Harden, and they went to the um, they went to the finals that year. And it was like, yeah, like a three overtime thing. And uh, I remember telling Coach Hollins, telling Grievous Vasquez, yo, we got these dudes. Just whatever you do, when they go to the hole and got to see Mark, do not come off your man. And Grievous Vasquez, he came off his man. And uh, I think it was Westbrook. He was in the trail for a three. He hit the three, man, and they won that game. Had we won that game, we'd have been up like 3-1, I believe. And uh, they ended up winning that series. Yeah, but uh, yeah, that's a, uh, to answer your question. Yeah, it's definitely a wrap. Well, Tia, you had an incredible, uh, incredible journey, man. Your legacy is cemented in Memphis forever because you're still there, and you in the Truth Lounge, live in the Truth Lounge now. But your heart, you know what I mean, and, and, and your body is still in Memphis. Uh, we we heard like you had a lasting impact. We heard stuff like, like Herb Jones said. I watched a ton of Tony Allen and Kawhi Leonard. I think my defense. 
uh, and how I see the game is something where I've tried to watch safeties in the NFL, Ed Reed, Chance, Ch- right. Cam Chancellor. If I could take pieces from their mentality, then I could roam around easily on the basketball court. Um, we talked about it earlier. I called it like Tony uh, I, I, uh, on the pre-production. I called, told Dylan, I like in your defense to like being a cornerback. You know what I mean? Uh, taking away, you know what I mean? The best receiver, not even having to go into the huddle yeah. like Dion because we already know what time it is. I'm supposed to take him, follow him yep. around uh, everywhere he's west. So yep. when you hear, you know, players, you know, current players, you know what I mean? Players of our generation, I'm sure you heard your OGs give you compliments on, you know, carrying a torch of, you know, on the defensive side of the ball. Um, I'm, you know, I know, I'm sure your jersey, you know, retirement and all that is on the way, but. How do you feel like your legacy, uh, are you, you know, you heard you look back at some regrets, your injuries, you know what I mean, at the worst times. That gave me flashbacks. So that, that just happens in the league. That happened to me a bunch of times, too, right, when you're about to go somewhere, some silly shit happens. So when you think back of your legacy, you know what I mean, in the NBA, whether that be Memphis or Boston or whatever that is, first of all, where would you like to see a TA statue? What jersey would it be wearing? And then what do you think you, your legacy or your lasting mark is that, you know what I mean, that you're going to leave in the NBA is? Oh, man, most definitely. It got to be in Memphis, mm-hmm. man, uh, honestly, because, uh, you know, that's where I pretty much gained my own identity. Uh, uh, not saying that I didn't like being in the shadows of those Hall of Famers and Ray and Tiggett and Paul. However, um, I was able to, you know, get to Memphis and uh, just identify what my true talent was and how I had to, you know, alter my game after injury. And uh, I thought the city of Memphis not only, uh, you know, showed Southern hospitality, but, you know, they accepted me with open arms. And, uh, you know, just the community work that I do, you know, um, just the way the the Grizzlies have always had my back through ups and downs. And, um, like I say, far as the far as just the legacy on the defensive end, uh, I, I, I'm kind of flattered. Herb Jones, you know, said that because you know I, I took I took heed and I took a serious notes in my craft mm-hmm. and trying to be the best defender, you know, in the world. You know what I'm saying? You know, looking at guys like you know uh, Bruce mm-hmm. Bourne, Shane Battier, uh, Ron Artest. Um, these guys I played at the highest level and stuck some of the best players in the mm-hmm. world and. Uh, just to know that Herb Jones even even said that he it, it further lets me know my legacy is on is implemented on the defensive end and it's here to stay. That that style of basketball, it, it'll come back. I'm pretty sure it'll come back. If you look at how they playing the game today with all this 155, 150s, 145. Hey, right? Silver like, wants you know it like, Silver <clears throat> wants it back. He wants yeah, to score him back let, down let, a little let, bit. Let, yeah, because those are we're missing out on good let, players. Not highlighting what people are doing the defensive side of the ba- uh, on the basketball. Exactly, and I'm a, and I'm a huge fan of Herb Jones, man. I like how he get in the passing lane. I like how he always in, up for a challenge, sticking the best player on the opposing team. So once he said Ta, that made me hey, all that lets me know is grit and grind is gonna live forever, man. First team, man. Well, Facts. Uh, before we get out of here, last thing I want you to do. Thank you so much for your time. I want you to build a starting lineup. You don't know what the what the other side of the ball is going to be, but you got to build a starting lineup of just pure defense. Uh, you are in that starting lineup. So who are you putting around you in that five? Oh, if you, that's if a good. You got to stop that's anybody. I right, off rip, man. You know I'm going with my OG Gary Payton. You better put yeah. him at the glove. Mm-hmm. You know you 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 gotta have a glove in there. Also a champion. Let's put some respect That's, on his name too. NBA champion. That's my OG too. Uh, at the at the four at the four, I'm going my other OG Kevin Garnett, mm-hmm. Big Lord. I'm going to put Lord at the Big four. Lord. Uh, obviously, right. you know I want I want I want him in any Facts. pick and roll. I I could every time I every time I hear pick and roll coverage, I could hear him. Hey Lord, hey Lord, send a right, send a right, Lord, send a right, Lord. <laughs> so I can hear that right now. Uh, at the three, we gonna go. Three, we gonna we gonna go we gonna go Scotty Pippen. Yes, God would. We gonna go Scotty Pippen, man. You know what I'm saying? Six ring Scotty, man. You know what I'm saying? Um, at the five, I'm going Marcus Saul, man. Defensive Player of the Year, man. That's my mm-hmm. boy, man. AKA Mr. First Team, man. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? And uh, that five right there, I believe, man, we gonna lock some down, man. Ain't, I don't think I don't even think it'll be no buckets, man. It's gonna be hard to get the ball up the court, how to catch it on the wing. Yeah, yeah. It's a couple of these shots gonna get erased if they do. I'm get about, people. Yeah, I'm talking about early GP, yeah. 94 feet Come GP. You understand? He talking all.
Say, hey, yeah, what you going to do? You ain't going to yeah. do nothing. <laughs> With the bubble gun. <laughs> that GP. I want that GP, man. And me, you know, first team all defense, diving on loose balls, man, giving everybody, you know, putting them in rhythm. And Scotty Pippen, man, you know, that stretch arm strong, man. He's still in everything come through the passing lane. So we in the game, man. Mm. Well, T.A., man, we appreciate it. Uh, you can catch you on the Truth Lounge this week. Looking forward to seeing yeah. that. And, man, first team, first team grandfather forever. We appreciate your time, and this was a lot of and fun. And the first, Much the love, first bro. team appreciate y'all. club shiznit, man. We finish in the yeah. black. <laughs> we ain't Most forgot you one more time hey, man. for first team. Man, man, come on, yeah. man. Hey, you going to have me go in there and make me yeah. a cocktail right now, man. <laughs> yep. <laughs> You're welcome. It's Thursday, man. That's the end of the work week. Shit. All right, much love, bro. Appreciate you.